Hey y'all, this is Daniel Mart back again, and this time we are doing another vlog style video. So, yeah, very long story short, very long story short, I was basically cast last minute in this short film that is tentatively called The Gift. The The Gift, it, the title is subjected to change at the moment. But yeah, very long story short, um, Lila, who I worked with back in La Familia, that film haunts me still to this day but um lila she was one of the great people from that production and i'm not sure if she recommended me or what the deal was but somehow the producer director of that production she contacted me yesterday and while i was at work so like my phone was blowing up and i couldn't respond because i'm at work i work at banana republic and you know she contacted me saying hey um, I know you've worked with Lila, um, we have this production, We the actor dropped out last minute, do you want to be a part of it? And I saw it, and I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, what's what's the what's the thing, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I got the script yesterday, it's a very short film, it's no longer than, shouldn't be no longer than five minutes, it's seven pages. And yeah, I had a discussion with the, with the writer, director, and two of the producers, I mean, the director is also the producer, is also the writer, and then one of the other people who's a producer, and... We did kind of like a table, like cold read. I mean, I got the part regardless. Um, but they just, she just wanted to see how I read the role initially, like what's my initial interpretation, and then she'll give notes, um, quick acting notes, and give me a quick backstory on what her vision is for the film and why she's making it and all that good stuff. So yeah, this is part of an, another film festival or a film competition. I forget right now what the name of the competition is, but you know, it'll be it's right there, named right there. And basically, it's the the parameters of the competition. It's that you have to have a film that's made within a five minute time frame, including credits. Which you know that's kind of annoying sometimes. Good thing I'm not really making the film. But yeah, that's the one thing sometimes about just film competitions, film festivals. That there's some there's some film festivals, some film contest, whatever that they don't include credits in the runtime. So you know you can have a five minute film. And then, like, the next minute, it could just be the credits of, you know, directed by, directed by, produced by, starring X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, all that. And they won't include it. And then there's other festivals, competitions, whatever, that will be like, oh, no, we said five minutes including credits. So that extra minute, you're disqualified because of that extra minute of credits. And it's, it's personally, I don't like it. It's kind of dumb, but that's just me. Uh, but, yeah, no, so, yeah, this film has to be about five minutes, not even about, it has to be five minutes with the credits. And it has to be a horror film, preferably a horror film, if I'm not mistaken. And I know one of the rules, regulations, is that it needs to have a shot that's an homage to a specific film or specific specific films. Um, I know it's five movies. It's The Exorcist, Psych Exorcist, Psycho, Halloween, The Strangers, and I, I don't remember what the fifth one is, but it should appear right there. Um yeah, and I find it weird because they said classic horror movies and, like, The Strangers. I'm like, that's a classic? I mean, I guess it's a modern classic, but not my first one. Not the one I'd consider right off the bat. But besides the point. So, yeah, and this is just a one-day shoot. I have to go all the way to West Palm Beach, which is a hell of a fucking drive for me. So, yeah, that's the plan for today. And, yeah, I just decided I was you know, about to eat breakfast, and I'm like, oh, shit, I should maybe vlog this and see... How this adventure goes and go from there and talk about my experiences because you know vlogging has become a huge part of my channel now um especially now that we're doing behind the scenes stuff and whatever have you so yeah that's basically basically it for now and let's see where i end up next and i'm back so i'm about to leave in about the next half hour give or take and right now i'm basically just packing up what i need for the shoot today so in the script, it says I need to wear like an all black outfit, essentially. Um, so this is basically the outfit. I can see it, but yeah, that. Black boots as well. So that's the outfit I have. But yesterday, last night, when I was talking to the director, Liz, we were coming up with like different ideas as to how Richie, which is the name of my character, should present himself. And we kind of agreed that he's basically your average guy. You know, he's your average guy who's just trying to be there, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm not trying to spoil anything right now. Um, once you guys see the film, you guys could make up your own interpretations. But he's basically this average guy who's just kind of there trying to help out in the situation. But, but you know, there is something off about him. And 
I didn't really think much about this last night, but as I've been thinking about it, you know, all of today, I've been thinking, does he have to wear all black, essentially? Because it just seems, it just seems like a very generic go-to thing to do. And something that we discussed last night is, again, his appearance. How does he come off? And we discussed, you know, is he like a nerd? Is he like a jock? You know, or is he like an average guy? And I basically said, you know, he he he's an average guy. That's what I, I envision him, and envision him. He's an he's an average guy just trying to get by in the situation. That's rather unusual, <laughs> and and yeah, I'm just gonna leave that that part at that. But I'm thinking because if if he's trying to be uh, come across as this average guy, it to me it just seems kind of generic that he would be wearing all black. And again, we discussed this last night. And last night she said, hey, maybe bring a few different outfits. Just you know, play around with with the scene, play around with the character, and let's see what we can come up. We can come up with, can can come up with, yeah. Um, if you know if the all black thing doesn't doesn't completely work out, or if it's you know working to our disadvantage or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And I start again. I start really thinking of what this character could could wear. And this is basically what I came up with. So the first outfit I have here is this. It's basically a blue uh, flannel. Flannel is the actual the name of the fabric, not the pattern, by the way. But this is a blue flannel with khaki pants. And this is for a more, like, preppy look, essentially, for the character. Um, and for that one, you know, I, I think it could work. It's not my favorite one, but, you know, I'm trying to go for different options. But, you know, I like the idea of it. And, yeah. Next up, which is the one I think I like the most, it's basically I have this, another flannel. But this time with the pattern, it's this brown flannel with a green trucker corduroy jacket and then these pair of um, ripped distressed jeans. And honestly, I think this one seems like the most, I think for my character, Richard, I think this is what he would wear. It makes the most sense, um, in my opinion. And then the last thing I have, it's not more, not really an outfit, much more as it is just an article of clothing. And that's this gray hoodie that I have here. And she said that maybe one of the issues could be... Um, one of the reasons why we may not go for the black outfit could be because maybe the black is just too dark. Like, we still want to have you in dark clothes, but it may just be too dark. So, to bring, like, a gray top, if anything. And, you know, I'm bringing the gray top, um, gray hoodie. And then I'm also, I also have the, the COVID mask, basically, because I need it for the film. Oh, so, yeah. It's, it's not like regulations. No, the character actually wears the COVID mask. So, you know, there's another hint as to what this character is. And then, also white sneakers here to bring as well she said two different pairs of shoes so you know black boots white sneakers so yeah those are the outfits we have here you know plus the one that i'm already right wearing right now and yeah so yeah i basically need to pack all that up as well as some gel hair gel um i need to pack that up as well because to figure out how they want to style my hair specifically or how i should style my hair specifically and kind of go from there and character-wise, clothing-wise, wardrobe-wise, that's basically what we have right now. Who knows, maybe I'm wearing the all-black, maybe I wear the the corduroy jacket, brown flannel and jeans, maybe I wear the, the blue flannel and khakis, or maybe I just wear the hoodie, who knows. Um, but it's going to be very fun to see, to actually develop this character. And then, that's another thing I was thinking, like, in between, in between the first portion of this video and this portion of this video, I really started thinking about it because... It's weird that I say this because I've literally done over 100 films at this point. I've been on over 100 productions. And it's weird that I'm saying this, but it's one of the few times where I feel like I'm actually developing a character, if that makes sense. And much more so with the director or writer, or both in this case, of, of the production. Because really, that's something that doesn't really happen that often, or at least in my experience. We don't... Me as an actor, from the productions I've been in, I don't really get the opportunity to develop a character, I feel. I, to begin with, I don't really get cast in projects. Like, I can't say I don't get cast in projects that often if I have over 100 credits. But I mean, I, what I mean to say is I usually don't get cast in, I cast in roles and characters that, that need me to develop a character that much. You know, usually it's just, you know, cast your number 56, you know, here's your milk, and that's it. You know, that, that's really the book of my work, if I'm being honest, where I say, where I come on screen, say a couple lines, and and that's really it. And I do try to develop those characters as much as I can, 
but there's always a limit, you know, when you only have like two lines sometimes, or, or you're just kind of there in the background. I mean, not necessarily as an extra, but you know, you only have like one or two lines and you know, there's, there's only so much you can do. And this film, I think is going to give me the opportunity to really help me develop myself as an actor and, you know, figure out how to, you know, portray characters, how to, how to inter you know, interpret characters and see what I can actually bring to the table. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the most, one, that's one of the things I'm most excited for. But even on top of that, like I said, it's not only is it rare for me to really develop a character to this extent, but it's even more rare where I'm developing it alongside the director, writer, producer, whatever. Because usually, directors down here, I feel not even, yeah, I would say most directors down here, they're, they're more focused on the vision of like how how the film is going to appear like cinematography wise is this shot good you know is this shot going to work you know is you know you know how long does this take have to be take one take two take three cool 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 and you know of course they do care for a good performance but they don't really touch base with the actors on what they're doing to develop that character if that makes sense and i'll be honest i fall into that trap too i'm a filmmaker in my own right i do fall into that trap as well and I mean, I feel like with the date, which I did, it's that's probably the film I did help develop the characters the most. Um, I mean, because Corn and I also did that that did that to an extent. Kane said not so much, to be honest. I mean, that's sort of classic slasher, and I kind of I'm not gonna say it was a rush job because it really wasn't at the end of the day. But I think I think that's more of a film I was just having fun on doing with my friends than actually like developing a character and. You know, that, that's yeah, character wise, that's kind of a throwaway film. It's still a fun film, don't get me wrong. And then when I bounce back to, let's say, Silent Local Cinematics, that one for sure, I'm just focused on the visuals of that for, for those productions. I'm, I'm solely focused on the visuals for that one, not so much as the characters. Um, you know, I mean, I did talk with Steven a little bit for his role. I did talk with Enrique a little bit with his role and, you know, what I wanted, but for the most part, I'm just focused on the visuals. Um, sa same thing with Dwayne and Raph for their roles, Eric, for his role. But. For those, I'm honestly focused. I was focused more on the visuals, but yeah, like I don't know why, but I just find it very rare down here in South Florida that you get that opportunity. Again, maybe it's just me, but you get, that you get that opportunity one to actually develop a character, and two to develop a character alongside the director, writer, producer. I, and I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. And, and it was fun last night, and I can't wait to see how we how we develop this character further to later today. So yeah, we'll see what happens next and go from there. Let's see. Location. This is basically the base camp, I guess you could say. It's just uh, an empty apartment building, which is what we need for a, one of the shots, some of the shots at towards the end of the film. And yeah, I basically slept on the way here, uh, which is like the two hour drive. My dad drove me, so it's not like I was sleeping and driving. Fuck that. No. Um, yeah, I definitely need to rest up um, in general. Yeah, no, I'm here at the location. I, like I said, I slept on the way up here. And yeah, we start at four. It's about to be four. And you know, I mean, right now we're just setting up. We're getting everything ready. People are coming in, you know, getting, you know, getting set up and whatever. And we should be doing a rehearsal um, soon of what, how these scenes are supposed to be played out. Because the, the majority of this, I mean, the, the whole film takes place at night. And nightfall doesn't happen right now until give or take 8 p.m. 7.30 to 8 p.m., somewhere around there. 
um, and now we're just gonna be rehearsing, rehearsing the whole, you know, this whole, I guess, late afternoon, evening. And according to Liz, the director, we're gonna end at 2 a.m. And here's the thing, I know it's a long shoot, I expected that, but it doesn't seem like a 2 a.m. shoot, <laughs> like that far, but that's just, that's just me. I don't know, it seems like we may finish more, I guess in my, my predictions, we're gonna finish more towards like maybe midnight. That'd be my my estimate, but I guess we'll see what happens. And yeah, right now, like I said, everybody's downstairs. Um, what the hell, I, mean, I don't know, maybe I should go downstairs and join. But um, yeah, we're all, we're all ready to go, and we'll go from there. Yeah. I mean, it's meant for icing. It's underneath my icing. fingernails. So that's the food coloring. A long way. So that's the food. Here's our makeup artist for the day. God. Introduce <laughs> don't, yourself. Don't put my face. Don't when they too much. When they see this, they're gonna freaking <laughs> makeup artist gonna come after me. Introduce yourself to the people. Oh hell no. The director, writer, producer. You're flushing the toilet, you know. Oh shit. <laughs> How the fuck did I do that? Yo, this looks crazy. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, God, oh yeah. That's gonna be bad. That's going okay. to my mouth. <laughs> okay, we definitely have to oh look at that. You look like something from Stranger Things. In something one of our like next mouth. movies, we gotta have someone throw up. Can you go get another mouse, please? Thank you. Okay. Carefully test temperature of beads. I can wash my hands. Ah, uh, great, now I get the dessert. <laughs> Do is be while cold. still very warm, use your while still very warm, right? Which is now, use your teeth into the adhesive. So again, until your teeth reach the bottom of. Are they in there? Ah. Uh, don't don't shake around too much. What? We're not shaking. They're not secure. Oh, no. uh -oh. To make a firm impression on the adhesive, suck the appliance onto your tooth. Like close your mouth like this. <laughs> Do not leave the denture in your mouth for more than one minute during this fitting process. Gently remove the appliance off to cool for 10 minutes. Is it, it like suck it on there until it like feels like it's fitting? Oh, it's not supposed to stick, it's just supposed to mold. Yeah. It's kind of like a mouth guard, maybe. Is it moving still? Now, can you take it out? Let's see. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah. The first, <laughs> oh, the first adhesive didn't work, so we had to go back to the store for some fix it in for some denture stuff. But uh -huh. he's got them in there now. So then do we, are we going to do the bottom one then, yeah. Uh, right. Huh? Uh-uh. They're coming loose? They're coming. You got to hold them there. What do you got to hold them there for a few minutes? Stuff the box. Yeah, the box. Oh, let me get a few more I don't want this stuff. Don't want to get anything better. Clean and dry, apply adhesive, insert denture, and briefly hold in place. Okay. They only need to stay on for one shot. We need it for one good shot. Mm -hmm. It says with proper use, this tube should last at least seven to eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
There's literally no instructions about how you take the knock on the box. <laughs> I'm sure it's on the box. Run the tube. Teeth didn't work. I have a bunch of gunk in my mouth now because of the adhesives. So it's a pain in the ass to now wash that shit off. I can kind of talk. Good thing that for this thing, I don't really need to talk. Just need to like growl or whatever. So that's fun. And yeah, we'll see how this turns out at the end. So it is currently like 10 20 right now. <clears throat> so yeah, what I said beforehand. You know, we're probably gonna finish sometime between 10 and 12. Completely wrong, so yeah, that, that time I said originally is wrong. The time that the director of this said that we may finish around two. Seems like it's gonna turn out. Um, as you guys saw, there was some trouble with the <clears throat> prosthetics that they were having for my teeth. The fake teeth I was supposed to wear, and goddamn, this lane got dark all of a sudden. Um, but yeah. So, you know, that, 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 that ate up a bunch of our time, like a good hour, figuring that out, and at the end we just ended up six, we just ended up um, taking it out, 64ing it, is that, is that the term? I don't remember, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so, you know, as you guys saw, probably some of the images or stills or, or videos, clips that I posted beforehand, I look nasty, I look weird, you know, I look disgusting with the, the black slime drool coming down my, my, my my mouth and it looks it looks amazing um yeah and i can't wait for you all to see it my phone is currently at 32 percent so hopefully i have enough battery to to you know film some other stuff take pictures etc 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 but you know there's a bunch of other people here who are also taking their own videos taking their own pictures so hopefully that gets shared in the group chat and i can share it with y'all um in the video later on as it will probably be seen hopefully and yeah, so far it's been good. We've been doing the same scene essentially since, let's see, I mean, we really started setting up around 7.30, after rehearsals ended and once it got night time, so 7.30, we had a whole issue with the, with the, with the fake teeth, so we probably didn't, we really didn't start shooting until about 9.30, give or take, 9, 9.30, <clears throat> and you know, it's like 10.20, 10.25, 10.20, 10.25 right now, so like, a good hour, hour and a half, we've been filming the same scene, which, you know, happens, um, I'm not complaining. The only thing I am going to complain about is the fact that the fucking food coloring or whatever the thing is that they gave me to turn my drool to have me have that black slime inside me just tastes fucking disgusting. So, like, that, that, yeah. I had to suffer a lot. I had to suffer a lot, and since I needed to, like, make sure that my mouth was black and, uh, the, the inside of my mouth was black like this, that was all black. I, you know, I need to like rinse in a bunch of that black stuff inside me a bunch, and kind of got, not gonna lie, got me a little bit gassy. <clears throat> it happens. But um, yeah, let's see what happens next. Right now, we're gonna be doing the out. Some now we're gonna do some of the exterior shots, um, and we're basically working in reverse. We're doing the film in reverse essentially, and yeah, so far so good. And oh, for the costume, we decided to just stick with the black costume essentially, the all black. Um, basically, we just thought it looked, you know, the director thought it just looks better for what we're trying to go for, and, and, because of the character I am, I'm portraying, the type of character I'm portraying, it makes sense to have that all black, you know, ensemble, which, you know, it is what it is, I like it, and, yeah, I just feel like this black, all black ensemble, I've used it for so many different roles, you know, just the long sleeve black shirt, and the black, black, uh, pants and the boots, because um, I've used it for, I use it for Frag, I've used it for Thanos, which is a film that's never going to come out um, because of post-production shit. You know, I, I feel like I've used this outfit in so many other movies. Um, now I've used the Sino Cast Cinematics, I kind of used this outfit as well. So, yeah, I don't know, like go-to film outfit. You should always have that, like a couple go-to film outfits or audition outfits or whatever have you. Yeah, there's a quick tip video. But yeah, we'll see what happens next. So they're currently setting up for the next shot, which is like I said, all the outdoor stuff, and it's it's gonna take a bit of time. 
just because of the mostly because of the lighting. We're doing that outside. It's a night scene. So they need to figure out all the lighting. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit out of breath because the scene that we did previously, I basically put myself all into it, so to speak. Um, I was growling, I was you know, I was growling, I was hunched over. Um you understand why when you see the film. <clears throat> Pero como se dice. How do you say this? But yeah, I mean it's been fine so far. And yeah, right now my phone is like at 30%. So we'll see. Hopefully somebody here has that. Yeah, so hopefully somebody here has a charger. But, um, you know, it's funny because kind of, I, I guess you could say this is a sign. But, oh, but like you can kind of tell I'm a theater actor in some respects. Uh, which is funny because I don't really consider myself a theater actor. Okay. But, um, I go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I, know. I mean, the funny thing is, since I'm like, because the previous scene just was like so physically demanding, I kind of felt cramped up now all of a sudden. So I basically just started stretching all of, um, a few minutes back, which is such a theater actor thing to do. Which again, which is funny because, again, I'm not really much of a theater actor. I've done theater, of course. I'm just clearly a Marvel film actor. But um, oh shit. <laughs> Very, very low. Did not expect that to be that low. But yeah, I mean, that's something that, like, people see me stretching, they're like, are you stretching? And it's just like, oh, to get your body better prepared, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's like such a, I don't know, I guess that's something I've seen, before, I've seen that theater actors are more amped, is that the right word? Or prone, prone to like doing stretches to like relax their bodies or like help develop their bodies or movements for the, for the, for the camera, which is something that, Normally speaking, film actors don't. And, <clears throat> you know, I do it off. I'm not going to say I do it, like, every single role. Tampoco, either. But, like, for, like, some of these more physically demanding, ro demanding roles, I do tend to, like, do stretches in between my breaks or whatever. And, I don't know, I just find it funny because, you know, I got asked, well, you know, why are you stretching? Am I good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just stretching my body. So, like, because I felt cramped because of the previous scene, blah, 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 you know. You know, to help my body not game break down right now halfway i don't want to be doing a scene and i got a cramp a charlie horse halfway to the scene and be like cut charlie horse so that that's that's what happened um again like i said right now they're sitting up i think they're ordering pizza as well um for dinner it's like 10 11 it's 11 09 right now so yeah hopefully i mean this theoretically should be done at two so we have three hours left maybe maybe not the other thing that kind of worries me and this is more of a and that's more of a me thing is the fact that i actually have work at 6 a.m so yeah that's the one thing that's gonna worry me so like hopefully i'm like at the latest i guess i'm out of here by 4 4 30 because the drive from where i work banana republic to here it's like a two-hour drive um if it's in the morning maybe like an hour and a half because of traffic but like that, that's the one that i'm kind of worried about right now that i have to get to work at six um so i mean we'll see what happens alan is probably not going to be sleeping that much tonight to be honest and yeah that's basically it and let's see what happens next <clears throat> it is currently 2 50 it's about to be three o'clock and we are still filming we we'll probably have another 30 to 45 minutes left of filming plus like 15 minutes of pack up <laughs> yeah, so even longer than expected. Cheers. Last shot at around 4.20. Last shot at around 4.20 p.m. And it is currently a little bit after 10 a.m., like 10.05. And it is after work. <laughs> both the acting job and my real job so as i mentioned beforehand i work at banana republic the one here at merrick park um in coral gables if you know you guys know the area and yeah this is the next time i'm able to vlog vlog so filming last night this morning same thing at this point was really crazy in a good way for the most part the last hour was kind of weird because the thing is i had to clock in to work here at 6 a.m. and the thing is this is in Coral Gables my workplace is in Coral Gables we were filming in West Palm Beach if you don't know Miami geography if you don't know Miami traffic 
that's a dick of a long ride, averaging two hours, essentially. With, given the fact that it's the morning, there's less traffic, it's an hour and a half. <laughs> so, long story short, we needed to be done by 4.30 at the latest so I could get to work on time. And so yeah, that last hour, I, like, I feel kind of bad because we kind of had to rush it a lot just to get me the fuck out. Because, you know, I need to get to work and, and, and an hour and a half later because of the, the distance traveled. So, I mean, I'll be honest, I did feel kind of bad for that. And there were some shots that regretfully, regrettably were affected because of that, because of the time constraints we put on, that, that we had to put on. Uh, but the, the other thing on top of that is that during that last hour, it began to rain. It wasn't heavy rain, it was like drizzling rain, but it was still noticeable enough to like be an issue. And then, so there was that, and then that last hour, for whatever reason, is when the camera started to like really malfunction, I guess. Or like, there, there was a whole thing with the focus, um, and I guess the, the, I guess the gimbal as well, or like, like there, one of the mechanism, mechanisms on the camera was like, like overheating or whatever, or something like that. And that was affecting the movement of the camera, which was then affecting the focus. And it wasn't connecting to the focus machine or the focus monitor. It was a whole issue. And I'm like, I'm not trying to rush y'all, but I was going to be out by, by like a certain time. So, <laughs> I mean, can we kind of get this done? So, yeah, I, mean, I do, I'll be honest, I do feel real bad for how that ended at the end. Granted, everybody is a very understandable situation. We all thought we were going to be done earlier again, too. Um, we all thought we were going to be done around 2 a.m. And we didn't finish about 4. I mean, technically, I didn't. I got off set at 4.30. They still had needed to shoot some more shots where they could cheat it where I don't I'm not seen or I'm not shown or it's just you no know, shots that I you know I don't need to be involved in so they probably finished somewhere around like five if I'm being honest um so yeah like that's a 12 because I got to onset on at four so that's a 12 hour 12 and a half hour shoot day and yeah it's a crazy shoot I mean look I've done longer shoot days the 48 hour film challenges those are always like I used to get 12 hours and the one that I did for this year about a month back I said, a month back uh, at the time that I'm filming this video, I, I was doing that shit for like two days straight because I was also the writer for that. And that's on top of the fact that I hadn't slept for maybe a day over that because I just have a bad sleeping habit, essentially. So I was going strong awake for about three days straight. Not good, not a good idea, but um, <laughs> it is what it is at that point. But um, yeah, that, that, that's that's basically it for that. Hi, morning. Um, that's basically it for that. It's it's that's the life of a filmmaker you know that's the life of an actor um you just have to roll with the punches sometimes and you know so, you know sometimes unexpected things happen you know rain you know rain happens the, the weather in general happens the malfunctions so you just have to roll with punches um it's, it's one of those things that i, I it kind of sucks because usually because i don't like being the problem in in when it comes to filming i always try to avoid it as best as i can but it, it's just one of those things like hey you're kind of it's one of those things like this could legitimate me. Like I don't want to say it could get me fired per se, because I, you know, I don't, because I'm, because I don't think they'd go that far for a first time offense, so to speak. And I would have called in, hey, I'm gonna be late by like let's say ten minutes if that was the situation. I don't know, but um, you know, it's just something I don't want to miss work either, and especially so suddenly. Also, because the thing is, I'm a new hire. Um, I've only been working here for about a two months, I guess. I guess at this point, um, I started in late August. We're halfway through October, August, September. By the time this video is out, it, it would have been two months, essentially. Maybe two and a half, depending on when this video comes out. <clears throat> so, and if I'm still working there at that point, well, I don't know. Else, maybe they decide, you know what, fuck you, we want to fire you now. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, well, hopefully that doesn't happen. We'll see. I'll, here's a text. Did it happen? I don't know. You Future me, tell me. Tell us, the audience. But, um, yeah, it's just been crazy, crazy. And... Honest, I think the film's gonna come out great. The, the great thing about this film is that it's a very, very quick turnaround. Um, I forget the name of the festival right now. Again, I'll put it up here. But it's it's a very quick turnaround. Um, it's not like 48. It's not to that extent. But you know, it is, again, one of those like, you get the, the prompts on one day and by the end of the week, basically you have to have the film submitted. And the submission is by Monday and we're, it's Friday. So they're gonna edit yeah, they're gonna edit everything between today and tomorrow. Have the composer compose the music, you know, color correction, edits, etc., 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 and go from there. And you know, you guys will of course see the film here. It's gonna be on on YouTube. 
Um, I'm gonna link it somewhere here, maybe on the card, of course, at the end of the video. Excuse me. But, you know, it, it's, it's a very, I can't wait to see how the finished product turns out, the finished film turns out. Um, it looks incredible. Um, I've posted a few stills or, or videos or whatever have you. you know, of course, before this, just gonna give you some, like a taste of, of how it's been turning out so far. It, it looks really good, especially with the whole blood effects in my mouth. Uh, which I know some of you are probably wondering what the fuck that's about, hey. Um, but yeah, that that's basically it. Uh, my dad's here, so I'll talk to y'all later. Because he has to pick me up, so yeah, my dad's here. I'll talk to y'all later and see what's up in the next in the video once I maybe take some a rest and go from there. And we are back. So I don't know if you can tell from my hair, um, but yeah, I never did a follow-up. <laughs> I completely forgot to do a follow-up after the, the the film, Primal Fear. That's what it ended up being called. Primal Fear was released. And it's just something I think I just kind of blinked out on because I got busy. And then life happened. A bunch of other stuff happened. And this video was originally supposed to be released at least early to mid-November. We are currently on December. I'm literally filming this on the day that this was supposed to be filmed because I thought where I was looking through the video, the 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 backlog and being where the hell is the last part of this video oh shit i never actually filmed it so here we are yeah um yeah it's already december i already have my stockings up so yeah let me just talk about a bit about the film um what was that wait what was that oh <laughs> the monkey yes but yeah so let me just talk a little bit about the film how it turned out so yeah everybody liked it 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 was submitted on time on monday to that festival um and yeah, like I said, everybody loved it. I'm trying to see how many views it got. Cause I, and I know it got a couple thousand views, like 1.4, 1.5 views. It's five minutes right on the right on the dot. And yeah, it turned out incredible. 1.2, 1.2 uh, views. That's how much it got. And honestly, yeah, it's one of the... I, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to say it's one of the best films I've worked on, both from a production standpoint, from a... And, and an actual film standpoint and just experience standpoint. Um, you know, despite the fact that at the end, at the very end, that last hour, despite how tired we were, despite the fact that I had to go to work, so I was, you know, again, regretfully, regrettably rushing people to, hey, can I just finish my shots, X, Y, and Z. Um, still turned out great. A lot of people liked it. Um, it's one of those films that I think will become a linchpin film, so to speak. So, like, you know, one of those films that, that you're known for. So, like, I have that with Sick Minded, for example. That's one of my other linchpin films. I would say um, Death on Pay is another linchpin film. Um, the Date, for, uh, from a directorial standpoint, is a linchpin film for me. So, like, again, this is one of these films I think I'm actually going to be known for, um, for the time being. You know, of course, as I do more projects, I'm going to have other projects that, you know, supersede this eventually. But uh, for the time being... Um, and yeah, it turned out incredible. Again, the film is five minutes long. We got 1.2 views. It's about, yeah, 1.2 views. And you know, it, uh, as far as I know, I, it didn't win any awards. It didn't get nominated for anything. Um, but, you know, hey, that's okay. That's okay. It is what it is. And honestly, it was just a very fun experience. It, it was a very fun experience. And honestly, like, the back-to-back -back of going from La Familia, which is the film project I did literally right before it uh, which was basically also done in 48 hours i mean that was for the 48 hour film festival and then going literally about two weeks later two two three weeks was it like a month ago or was it a month apart i don't remember anymore but like but you know going from that familia which is honestly one of the worst fucking things i've done period from a production standpoint experience whatever um to then going to improve into primal fear which is uh, again one of the best experiences period um was just amazing like i like that that turnaround um and even the quality of the film as well everybody it, it was just incredible it was it was incredible i am very thankful to be to have been a part of it and yeah it, it was great um funny enough i know i, I know in my in the last portion of the video i also said oh yeah i'm gonna be posting about this on social media um on instagram and whatever i again i don't know what the fuck happened i forgot i think i was just that so damn tired um because you know just life happened i just kind of forgot it was that and also the fact that um because on instagram you know how you could do a post where it's 
linked or like a what is it, like a linked post or a shared post where like you know it appears on everybody's profile so to speak um i forgot the actual technical term but it's you know, right there in the video right now text wise um so that's what happened and liz she did that for all the posts and i think i I don't want. I don't want to say absentmindedly, but it's like okay, that that that's enough for me. So I, I'm not going to promote it as much. I, I'm I, as a whenever this video releases, whenever this video releases, it's today. The fuck, as of today, I'm actually going to start promoting the film more, um, because I want to. I, I really like it. And I still have a bunch of behind the scenes photos, which you're going to see pretty soon. Um, and I like a lot of the stills that came out. Again, it's just a really great project. I'm like, I kind of want to share it. I kind of want to give it day in the sun, because. Uh, Again, one of the best projects, and I haven't, per and I personally haven't shared anything about it. Like, what the hell? Um, and yeah, and like that's part of the reason why. Like, this video was supposed to come out like in November, but like, so much stuff happened in November that was that I had to discuss. Like, stuff with like there was updates with 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 the strike, for example. There, were, you know, which was just absolute madness. I mean, the strike ended yesterday. I'm not the strike. The, the you know with the the negotiations, which um, that's a discussion topic maybe for next week. But um. You know, there was that. There was my 10-year anniversary on YouTube. I did a Black Friday video. Um, I did some news on Best Buy. Matthew Perry died in that time. And then, of course, I had my list videos throughout all of October. So, yeah, I, I, this is one of those things I just kind of regret, regrettably just kind of went through the – because of the nature stuff, it just kind of got lost in a cycle. But, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, – that for next week, I'm definitely going to talk about my thoughts on the strike um, and how it ended, um, the deals we got, because um, – it's the AI thing, the 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 AI thing that is the one part that that it has still pisses people off, um, and, I, and I have some thoughts on that. So I'll, pro so I'll probably talk about that next week um, and go from there. But that's besides the point. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, I'll leave a link to the video to the to the movie at you know at the end. It's also linked down below. Definitely go check it out if you haven't already. And it's a great film. I'm really excited for y'all to see it. And now for some behind the scenes. Pictures, thank you for watching. This is Daniel Mart signing out.